Hey everybody, join in, join in, join in. I'm gonna get bundled up because I'm on the porch and it's cold. <laughs> it's cold. But I just want to make sure I do the part three of Ruth. It's only four chapters, but we're on chapter three. So everybody join in. We're gonna be taking the third part of Ruth. I don't know if I'm gonna take it to the home run, but I think I think I think we're gonna be in a good stopping point today. Okay. Yeah. Hey everybody, it's so cold. It's so cold. <laughs> How are you guys doing today? I pray well. Um, we're going to be in Ruth chapter 3. And as always, I'm going to have you guys here. And this, um, I know everybody's like, where'd you get it from? It's just a regular study Bible from any bookstore. There's nothing special about this one. But um, this is the training wheels to the King James and the NIV and all that stuff. So, yeah. But hey, everybody. Join in, join in, join in. Ooh, oh my goodness <laughs> so we left off in chapter two with ruth um so now we're going to hit chapter three the last part of ruth what was it four um two and 23 it says so ruth stayed with the young women and worked with boaz and gathered grain so in chapter two we saw where ruth came in contact with boaz he saw her he people were talking about her and he had her actually eat at the table in the presence of her enemies because he heard how people were talking about her, right? So he heard through the grapevine that she was in town, that she was a Moabite woman, that her husband died, and he heard all the bad things, right? But in the right person's hand, that bad information, quote unquote, is actually good information because it shows your character. Yes, Ruth had just lost her husband. Yes, she was a Moabite woman. Yes, she had a different God. But guess what? Her faith in God and her obedience in God through the time that she was married, she saw who God was. She saw God do miracle signs and wonders. And she was like, I'm not going to leave Naomi. She was there for me. I'm going to be there for her. And in fact, she held on tight to Naomi. And she said to Naomi, don't ask me to leave you again. Don't turn me away. So this woman with great character although she lost everything and although she has a sad story she still has honor integrity obedience and she's out in the fields gleaming at risk of being raped molested abused anything just so she can feed not only herself but her mother-in-law right so that's the backdrop on chapter two so it leaves off with her and he's he saw all of this he called her to the table and he's like you know may god reward you kindly for what you are doing and what you have done and then he told everybody don't touch her and then he said leave some extra grain out for her wherever she goes just leave a trail so she can take it home and then she had um, leftovers enough to take home to her mother-in-law who she traveled there with and she found favor right the bible says when you find favor with god in return you shall find favor with men and every time I think about Ruth, I think about the favor of God, the love of God, and how he is getting ready to transform a lot of people's lives right now in this season. God is really about to take the nobodies and make them a somebody. Ruth was one of the nobodies. She didn't serve God. She was a Moabite woman. They worshiped Baal and all this stuff. And she was a nobody. But as you watch and watch Ruth transform in a matter of time, four chapters, that's all it took to see God's, God's glory was four chapters and everybody knows who Ruth is and everybody knows who Boaz is, right? Four chapters is all it took for God to show what obedience and favor looks like when you get it. When you find favor with God, you find favor with men. And God is saying the favor of God is about to overtake you with that the favor of men is gonna follow you're not gonna have to look for the favor the favor will literally chase you down now we're about to get into the text right it says this chapter 3 verse 1 naomi ruth's mother-in-law said to her my daughter shouldn't i try to look for a home that would be good for you isn't Boaz, whose um, young women you've been working with, our relative? He will be separating the barley from its husk at the threshing floor tonight. Freshen up and put on some perfume. Dress up and go down to the threshing floor. 
don't let him know that you're there until his feet until you're at his feet and lie down there he will make it clear what what you must do Ruth answered I will do whatever you say you know when I think about Ruth I just get excited inside because she didn't question anything she knew that Naomi would not tell her anything that was against her or that, that would harm her she said what did she, she said I will do whatever you say I will do it when God is telling us to do something are we going to question God why you want me to go pray for them I don't like them God why you want me to go back to that job I don't like them people at that job God why God God why or are you going to say, whatever you say, God, I will do. Whatever you send me, God, I will go. Or are you going to have that stank attitude every time God asks you to do something? You got to question him. And now he got to go back and forth with you and have you get humble in order to go do what he told you to do in the first place. How many times have you argued with God with what he told you to do because you don't like them? Because you can't stand them. So what? It's not for you to like them. It's for you to be obedient. Because God has something bigger for you. And God wants to see if you will obey him with the little things. He wants to see if you will obey him when you don't want to do it. He wants to see if you're going to do it when he, you don't. You can't stand him. God is going to say, go pray for them. Go get them money. But God, you don't know. God, you don't know. You don't know what they did to me, God. Go do it anyway. Go do it or I'll humble you and make you go do it anyway. Ruth's response every single time is, whatever you say, I'll do. Whatever you say, I'll do. And if you're expecting a blessing from God, if you're expecting something major from God, if you're expecting to find favor with God, do this for me in the comments before I go further. Mean this with your whole heart as you begin to type this out because God is going to try you. Write in the comments, whatever you say, God, I'll do. Only the obedient are going to write this because some doors are going to open in your favor. But you're going to get asked to do something that you don't want to do. Are you going to do it anyway? Whatever you say, God, I'll do. That is giving God your yes. You are making a contract with God when you open up your mouth and you're writing this or you're declaring this with your mouth. Whatever you say, God, I'll do. Mind you, I warned you. Before you say yes, understand that that yes comes with contingencies. Meaning he's going to ask you to do something that you don't want to do. So don't come back on my page and say, Pastor Lendaria, you don't understand. No, no, no. You're doing this blindly. You're saying, God, whatever you say, I'll do. You have my yes. And if you mean it, let it be so. Do what you do best, God. Here we go. I'm going to let y'all write that out. Write that out. Because some of y'all got something to get off your chest. But understand, those enemies that you don't like, they're going to reappear. That ex that you don't like, they're going to reappear. Those jobs you can't stand, they're going to reappear. Whatever you say, God, I'll do. Sometimes it's a simple prayer. Trust God anyway. Do it anyway. Do it anyway. I'm telling you, as you write this out, understand the gravity of what you're saying yes to. So don't write me talking about you. Oh, no, I know. You're going to have to do something that you don't want to do. In return, you're going to get everything that you've been asking for according to God's will for your life. Yes, do it scared, but do it anyway. I just want to make sure I warn everybody. Because don't come, 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 don't come for me. Talk about your life got shaken up. <laughs> Here we go. We're going to keep going. <laughs> Ruth went to the threshing floor. Matter of fact, let me go back and say this. So what Naomi is telling her, right, in this text... <laughs> <laughs> what Naomi is telling Ruth in this text, right? She's telling Ruth to go to the threshing floor where they're about to have this festival, right? And to kind of be invisible and to go and lay at Boaz's feet. Go and lay at his feet. 
And don't let him know you're there. When he realizes that you're there, you're going to know because he's going to give you clear instructions. Leave my door alone. He's going to give you clear instructions. So this is her like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to go lay at this strange man's feet. Yes, I know him from giving me kindness and from protecting me on the field. But I'm about to go lay next to this man and his feet. She got a shower. I don't know if they had showers. She got a wash off. You know what I'm saying? Whatever she had. Some little rose petals. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? She got clean. She put a perfume on. She put a nice dress on. She went down there to the threshing floor. And she laid at his feet. So here we go. Ruth went to the threshing floor and did exactly as her mother-in-law directed her. Boaz had eaten and drunk to his heart's content. So he went and lay at the edge of the pile of grain. Then she went over to him secretly uncovered his feet and she lay down come on at midnight the man was the man was shivering when he turned over he was surprised to see a woman laying at his feet who are you he asked she answered i am ruth spread the corner of your garment over me because you are close you are a close relative who can take care of me <laughs> boaz replied may the lord bless you my daughter the la um this last kindness that you did not go after a younger man. So, Boaz I ate and drunk. He good and tired. He good and toe up right now. He laying down. It's midnight. He got him a palace, um, little hay, whatever they got to lay on. And, you know, the girls are picking out their guys right now. Like, you know, they picking out who they want. And Ruth was beautiful. She was young. She was beautiful. She was vibrant. She can get whoever she wanted. But she did what her mother-in-law told her. So she gets there, he rolls over, it's cold, he reaches over for the cover, and he realizes, oh, whoa, there's a strange woman in my bed, or on my pal. There's a strange woman here. So he wakes all the way up, like, hold up, I'm like, I ain't dreaming, God, okay. He realizes that it's Ruth from the field, and he says, bless you that you, you didn't go after somebody younger. See, Boaz knew the kind of man that he is, that he was. He knew that he was a provider and a protector, but he was older. So when I heard that, and as I'm sitting here with it, Boaz was like, bless you that you did not go after somebody younger. We all have our own insecurities, but God gives us exactly what we need. She was a young, vibrant, beautiful woman, and he was an older provider, but he, he could love her. He can protect her. He can show her everything. And he was just gracious that she was in his presence because he knew that he could love her the way she needed to be loved and care for her the way she could be cared for. Who knew that this big, strong, scrappy man had insecurities about his age? I am in Ruth chapter 3. And he was like, you could have chose somebody younger, but you chose me. How many of us have been in a situation where we didn't think that we were worthy of the love? We didn't think that we were worthy. Maybe the age, maybe the kids, maybe the body type, even how we look. Maybe we've been beaten up by the world and we're like, you choosing me? You're choosing me? I know when God chose me a couple of years back, I was like, me, God? Do you know who I am? Do you know what I've done? Do you know the kind of woman that I have been? And you're choosing me? An ex-stripper. I was out in these streets, baby. I was out here doing strange things for a piece of change. I had no inclination on being faithful whatsoever. Our relationship was on the brinks because neither one of us could stop lying, cheating, and scheming and tearing each other up in the streets. But you're choosing me, God? Me? A nobody from the projects that's just trying to make it. A nobody that's barely making a minimum wage trying to make it raising all these kids. And God says, that is precisely why I'm choosing you. That is precisely why I'm choosing you. Because I can raise you up and you can relate on so many different levels. You can relate to homelessness, poverty, being raised in the hood, being a stripper, being out here doing some strange things for a little piece of change, lying, cheating, conniving, being manipulative. You can relate on all of these levels and I can wash you and make you new and present you to the world and show the world what I can do when you follow me. I can show them what happens when I wash you in my blood. I can show the world, understand that if God can do it for somebody like me, baby, it's nothing for you to get it. It is nothing for God to come in and say, I choose you. I want you. 
Boaz did not know that he was worthy. And a lot of us have a lot of things that we don't think we're worthy of. Some of us think that we've been a sideline our whole life. So we don't think that that kingdom marriage is going to be for us. Because we done been in everybody's bed but our own. And we done laughed and mocked these women because we can lay with they man. But God is saying, I'm choosing you to be that kingdom wife. I'm washing you with my blood. I'm choosing you even though you don't think that you're worthy. I'm choosing you so you like it or not. I'm still going to choose you like it or not. I'm still going to choose you. In fact, I'm going to choose you first because I got a point to prove to the devil because he thought that he was going to have you in his grasp forever. And God says, I break the chains. I break the chains. And as Boaz is sitting there looking at this young, beautiful, vibrant woman who has the innocence of the world and death and defeat on her body. He's looking at her like, you choose me. And Naomi is defeated. Not Naomi, but Ruth was defeated. And Ruth was like, you don't know what I've been through. I just need someone to love me for me. I just buried my husband. Everybody's laughing at me and mocking me because I'm a Moabite woman. But I just want to be loved. I don't know how to be loved, but I just want to be loved. I don't want judgment on me. I just want somebody to love us and provide for us and take care of us because we're hungry. And you're looking at two imperfect people looking at each other, thinking they're both not worthy. Ruth didn't think that she was even worthy of his kindness. And he didn't think he was worthy of her because of his age. And God says, I'm gathering you two together because I can make you guys whole because you are one. As he sat there looking at this young, vibrant woman, he said, you could have chose somebody younger. But God, but God, God could have chose anybody else but you, but God. Let me keep going. We're almost done with chapter three and I'm going to close it out. Mm. Boaz replied, may the Lord bless you, my daughter, for this kindness. You didn't um, go for, um, you didn't go after any younger man, whether rich or poor, it is better than, um, better than first. Don't be afraid, my daughter. I do whatever you say. Mm. Don't be. That's twice. Now, this is Boaz saying this to her. She was the one always saying this. Now, he is saying this to her. He is saying, don't be afraid, my daughter. I will do whatever you say. My God. That is just so much confirmation in itself. Of who they both were. Of who they both were. Let me keep going. The whole town knows that you are a woman who has strength and character. Mm. It is true that I am a close relative of yours, but there is another relative closer than I. Stay here. Stay here tonight. Stay here tonight. In the morning, if he will, if he will agree to take care of you, that is good. He can take care of you. But if he does not wish to take care of you, Then I solemnly swear, as the Lord lives, I will take care of you myself. Lie down here until the morning. That is just so beautiful. They both were saying, I'll do whatever you say. She gave him some answers. She's like, take care of us. And he got up and he was like, you know, I will. I solemnly swear that I will. But there is somebody that is closer than me to you. So I'm going to give him his opportunity. This is where the counterfeit has to come in, right? The counterfeit has to come before the real thing. And this is just in life. And I realize this with jobs, relationships, friendships, whatever. There's always a false one that comes before the real thing. There's always a false relationship before their kingdom marriage. When you ever see somebody who was married, they was like in a relationship for 10 or 15 years. And they get out of that. They were held hostage. They were held captive. And in the next six months, they go and they find the love of their life. And they have marriages for like 30 years. That's because you were incaptivated by the counterfeit. You were with a job for 11, 12 years and you leave that job and you find a job that pays you beyond what your worth is. That's because you were with the counterfeit and you were blind by it, right? For so long, you were believing lesser and you were settling for safe. But Ruth was like, I don't care. I want you. I mean, we'll do the process. We'll do all that stuff. Okay, if he claimed me, he claimed me. But I believe that God has brought us together for a reason. 
He reassured her because the reassurance is coming in our lives. The reassurance is coming. He reassured her. He said, I solemnly swear. Listen to that promise. He says, I sw solemnly swear as the Lord lives, I will take care of you myself. Do you know what that love is? That's, that's, that's a wedding bell right there. She was already getting proposed to. Baby, and she ain't have to drop no drawers to get it. Excuse my language, God. She ain't have to do no strange things for a piece of change to get it. He says, I solemnly swear that I will take care of you. Come on, let's keep going. <laughs> my bad. I'm still being pulled. <laughs> okay, y'all. So Ruth lay at his feet in the morning. Then she got up early in the morning before anyone could recognize. At that moment, Boaz thought to himself, I hope that no one... Mm. Okay. He thought to himself, I hope that no one will ever know that this woman came to me at the threshing floor. Then Boaz told Ruth, scratch the cape out that you're wearing and hold it tight. So she held it tight while he measured out six measures of barley. Then he placed it on, on, on her back and went back into town. So he said that because her honor. If someone would see her leaving early in the morning with a man all the way at night, they were already talking about her. And he wanted her honor to be intact. He knew that nothing happened that night. But when the wrong people get the wrong kind of information, they run with it. And he wanted to make sure that her honor was intact. He didn't never he never wanted to dishonor her. And when you get with the right man, he never wants to put you in a situation to where your honor is intact. He was like, I just hope that no one sees her running away because she's not no floozy. She's not no good time girl. She ain't that kind a woman she's my wife that we're talking about here she's gonna be my wife and that's the kind of woman that she is and before she left he again showed her what kind of husband that he was going to be he made her stretch out her dress till it couldn't dress, stretch out anymore and he filled it with food and he sent her on her way because he was not going to let her go empty-handed because again boaz was a provider that is who he was and he was just delighted that he had her in his life and most husbands, real kingdom husbands, they always want to make sure that you're okay. They don't want one tear to fall from your eye. So he just wanted to make sure her integrity was intact, that her honor was intact. So that was just beautiful right there. Let's keep going. We're almost done with chapter three. So when Ruth returned, her mother-in-law Naomi asked, how did things go, my daughter? Ruth told Naomi everything that the man had done for her. She said, he gave me six measures of barley and told me not to come back empty-handed to you. <laughs> Naomi replied, stay here, my daughter, until you know how it turns out. The man won't rest unless he settles this matter today. She left him, not empty-handed, because he was going to make sure she went with whatever she needed. Because he was going to do whatever, mm, as I'm talking, as I'm talking, you can have whatever you like. You can have whatever you like. Yeah. God is about to do something in your life. He wanted to make sure that he was going to provide for her. That she did not leave with her honor not intact. She wanted to make sure that she was still provided for. And he needed to go make sure he handled that other close relative. Before the other relative meant nothing to him because he didn't know where it was going to go. Mind you, she could have chose anybody, rich or poor, to be with that night. She chose him. So now he got to go handle that close relative and he wasn't going to rest until he handled that relative. So it's one more chapter left and we're going to leave off there and you're going to have the results. Hopefully tomorrow, if I'm not too tired from work, tomorrow we're going to try to come back and we're going to close it out with Boaz getting resolution for what's about to happen with this kingdom ordained marriage. So. I love you guys, and I hope that this meant something to you guys. I hope that it resonated, and I hope that it touched where it needs to touch. Remember, God is going to ask you to do something, and I already got y'all agreement in the comment. Whatever you say, God, we will do. We come into agreement with everything that you have planned for our life, Father God. We will do it scared. We will do it blind. We will do it anyway. You have our yes and our amen. That is what you have, Father God. 
Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on your children. May they have an encounter with you that will change their lives for the better. And if those who are afraid and saying that, God, I can't hear you, I can't hear you, how can I hear you? I just pray that you come into their lives and you give them that whisper. You give them that still, small whisper. Or you give them that loud roar that you do, Father God. But I pray that you give them the patience in the waiting room. And they can say how long and I will say until. You wait until. Father God, we will wait until. We will wait until. There's no rush, Father God. We got a lifetime with you, Father God. And we're ready. We're open and we're ready and we're willing, Father God. We are your vessels and use us as such. And if anyone needs a financial breakthrough, Father God, I pray that the finances begin to spring in from the north, the south, the east, and the west, Father God. Rain down the finances as only you can. And if it's healing, Father God, as I know my voice is called to heal the people, Father God, I ask <clears throat> I ask that you begin to heal your children, Father God. I don't care if it's the back because that's what I'm seeing in my eyes right now, Father God, the right side of their back, Father God. I don't care if it's that, Father God. I ask right now under the sound of my voice that you begin to bring divine healing into your people, Father God. Restoration into your people, Father God. Whatever you need, Father God, let your children have according to your will and purpose for their lives. Who do what only you can do. I feel it, God. I feel it. I feel the mighty change. I feel the shift in the atmosphere. Do what only you can do, Father God. We'll go wherever you tell us to go. We'll say whatever you tell us to say. It is in your mighty name I pray, Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. Amen. Love you guys. I am freezing, so I am about to go in the house, and I pray you guys have a good night. <laughs> I love you guys. Have a good night.